Neil Bonnard. I'd like to talk with you about foods and fertility. So many people are struggling with fertility issues. They're spending a fortune on tests and treatments, and they may not be getting the results that they're looking for. Well, let's talk about the role of foods. Now, for us, we kind of came into this by accident. We were doing a research study on menstrual pain. The study was done with Georgetown University's Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, and we were testing a particular diet. Half the participants went on this healthy diet. The other half took a supplement, uh, a placebo, a dummy pill. And then after two months, they switched. The diet group got the supplement. The supplement group got the diet. And what we found is that menstrual pain improved dramatically. The diet that we were testing eliminated animal products and it minimized oils. And we did that because when you make those changes, estrogen levels fall a bit and that can make menstrual pain improve or even go away. Anyhow, in the course of this research study, we asked all the participants not to use any hormones of any kind, no hormone-related medications. And that meant if they were on birth control pills, we asked them to use some other kind of birth control method. Now, one of the women in the study said, Dr. Barnard, don't worry about me. I don't use contraception of any kind. She and her husband had given up having a baby years ago. She said, we've both been evaluated. It's not him, it's me. I, I just don't ovulate. So we don't use any kind of contraception, haven't for years. Well, the second month that she was on the healthy vegan diet, she came into our research center and she said, Dr. Barnard, I've got bad news and I've got good news. And I said, what is it? She said, the bad news is I'm leaving your research study. And the good news is I am pregnant. And she was pregnant. She gave birth to a beautiful baby. And then some years later, another baby and then another baby. Um, she had written, I guess, on her medical chart, infertility. But she could now take an eraser and make that all go away. So, wait a minute. I was just describing that she had begun a diet that was different in two ways from what she'd been eating before. Animal products were removed and oils were really low too. Well, what's that about? Well, the first thing is if you're on a vegan diet, you're not eating any dairy cheese. Cheese has hormones in it. That's right. Cows are impregnated every year on a dairy farm and their pregnancy lasts about nine months. Throughout that time, they are making estrogens, female sex hormones, that get into their blood plasma and from there they go into their milk and they're concentrated in cheese. Okay, so cheese has hormones in it. What does that mean? Well, researchers looked at men. At a fertility clinic in Rochester, New York, researchers looked at sperm counts in men who consumed relatively little cheese, a half a serving of cheese every day on average, and they compared them to men who ate a lot of cheese, between one and two and a half servings per day. And what they found, was the more cheese the men ate, the lower their sperm counts. It was as if the estrogens, the female sex hormones, were causing the men to have more fertility problems. But there's more to it. Dairy products might also affect fertility in women. At Harvard University, a researcher named Daniel Kramer started looking at milk, and he focused on different countries. What he looked at was the drop in fertility that occurs as a woman goes from her, say, late 20s to about her late 30s. As you know, fertility starts to drop off as the years go by, which is why a lot of women, they realize, okay, I'm 22 years old, I'm maybe my maximal fertility, but I don't really want to have a baby now. I want to start my career, or I'm going to school, or whatever. And then when she's about 35, her mother calls her on the phone and says, sweetheart, you know, you don't want to put off having a baby forever. You know, it gets harder as you get older, da, da, da. Okay, so what Dr. Kramer did, he looked at different countries. If you look at Thailand, the reduction in fertility between, say, a woman's late 20s and her late 30s was about maybe 25%. Now, is, are dairy products consumed in Thailand? Not really very much. This is not the grilled cheese and ice cream capital of the world, not at all. Now, in Brazil, there's more cheese and the drop in fertility, about 50%. In the United States, the drop in fertility, about 80%. And if you put all the other countries in, the pattern's not perfect. But you can see a trend. 
the more dairy in the diet, the more women lose their fertility. And the fertility drops faster and faster and faster. Well, what's that about? What Dr. Kramer thought is it might relate to something called galactose. Okay, this is the lactose sugar molecule, lactose, L-A-C-T-O-S-E. In your digestive tract, it breaks apart to produce galactose and glucose. And it's the galactose that seems to be the problem. Galactose can be toxic to the ovary. So does this mean that if a woman has a taste for milk or ice cream or yogurt, and she's getting that daily galactose load, that it could be damaging her ovaries? That's what we think, yes. And we think it not only contributes to infertility, but may also contribute to ovarian cancer. This is a study done in Sweden back in 2004. And the more dairy servings women consume day after day, the higher their risk of ovarian cancer. So this is a good reason to get the dairy products out of your diet. And frankly, while you're at it, get all the animal products out of your diet. When you're on a healthy, plant-based diet of vegetables and fruits and whole grains and beans, you've got the best chance for good health. Don't forget to take a supplement of vitamin B12. You need it for healthy nerves and healthy blood. You don't need much, just 2.4 micrograms a day. And it's at every drugstore and every health food store. But you put it all together, a healthy plant-based diet is the road to health. Thanks a lot.